During college, I was a science major studying biology and chemistry, and I was also a Christian, and that often uh, contradicted itself, and it was really a struggle that I had to come to grips with, and I realized that I couldn't live my entire life doubting God. I either had to be all in or be all out, that it couldn't be just kind of a thing that I thought might be true, but a lot of why all these question marks that a lot of my professors were bringing up. And a lot of what they said makes sense. But as a scientist, it was as a scientist that I found the proof of God. Because the reality is, is it was as a scientist when I focused on the laws of science. Uh, what are theories? What are hypotheses? And what are laws? And I focused on what is it we actually know to be true. Um, and I highly recommend if you haven't seen the first episode, that's kind of the whole episode is dedicated to just knowing what is it we know to be true. And that's things like, uh, I know I'm filming a video. I know that to be true. I know, you, you know, while you're watching it, you know you're watching a video. Um, I know that there's uh, a Bible in front of me. I can touch it. I can see it. I can, you know, I, I know it to be true. Uh, there's things that I can't see like Australia never been there, but I believe it's real And then there's things that go back in history like World War II. I wasn't alive, but I know it happened and we can go back really as far back as the Greeks then the Persians then the Babylonians um, And even the Egyptians before them, but after we get to about 4,000 years ago 4,500 years ago at the most we don't really know anything. That's the reality of it. We don't know. There's a lot of assumptions made, and because they're the most popular things that have to do with science, uh, we talk about them as if they are true. Um, a thousand years ago, I might have been beheaded if I said the world was round. Uh, today, if I if I work, you know, if I suggest some of the things that I might suggest as a Christian. Uh, when it comes to science and creationism, I'd be fired from a university. Uh, you know, really nothing has changed with science when it comes to the consequences of those trying to think outside the box. Um, it just, the actual concept, you know, instead of being beheaded, I just lose my job and credibility, that kind of thing. So um, it was really just recognizing that we just don't know. Um, and that's kind of where I started. And then I started questioning a lot of things that uh, that really didn't make sense and uh, you know we did an episode on dinosaurs that was a big one fascinating episode I highly recommend you check that out um, but another one was Neanderthal and uh, Homo erectus and the Magna Carta man or whatever the one before that one was that well what is that like Neanderthal made tools so they were you know you look at their skeleton you're like clearly that's a different thing than a human but they were they made tools um, they made they made things and they had languages and they communicated and put on clothes and stuff like what is that well it was interesting because it was actually a dentist and an enzymologist who proposed the idea this is a long time ago at least at least 20 years ago they proposed this idea it was the dentist that originally came up with it um, in the Bible, the first humans lived somewhere upwards of a thousand years. Um, well, what would a thousand-year-old man's teeth be like? It definitely couldn't be like our teeth. Um, because I was getting fillings when I was like 10, 11 years old. I mean, imagine if I was eight, nine hundred years old. What my, Like, I wouldn't have any teeth. Um, there's a lot of 90-year-olds that don't have teeth. Imagine going another 900 years like that, like you'd, you'd obviously have teeth that were different than ours, which would then propose that then your whole skeletal structure would be different than ours. Because if you look at a 90 year old man or woman, they actually shrink, they get smaller because of gravity. Gravity pushes them down and the, the discs between their spine bones um, get smashed and pressed and because of gravity and oftentimes they end up being significantly shorter or hunched over um, because of maybe 70, 80 years of gravity. We'll imagine 700, 800 years of gravity. What that would do to the skeletal system. You'd be, if you had our current skeletal system, you'd just be smashed to the ground. Um, so your skeletal system would have had to have been different to sustain 900 years 
of uh, buildup in your teeth, 900 years of gravity, wind, rain, the elements, um, food, you know, your gut would have been very different, but your skeletal system after 900 years of being pressed on the ground, it would have been a thick, thick skeleton, skeletal system. Your jaw would have been significantly bigger because your jaw grows out as you grow older. And you would have been bent over dragging your knuckles on the ground because of gravity. I mean, imagine 900 years of gravity. Look at the toll it takes on a 90 year old man or woman. Imagine a thousand years of gravity. Um, or the toll that food takes on your teeth or your intestines um, or your ribs or what gravity does to your hips or your knees or all of that, your feet, the arch supports, all of it. You would have to have a totally different skeletal system um, in order to be able to make it that long. So the proposition was that Neanderthal um, and even the, the uh, Homo erectus and those even prior to them, that the older they got, the kind of the more hunched over they were. That a Neanderthal was really a 900 year old human. Because if you kind of think about how that evolution went, you had Neanderthal, no human skeletons. And then there was a period of time where you had Neanderthal and human skeletons together. And then there was this suddenly, there's no more Neanderthal skeletons, there's just human skeletons. Uh, really kind of exactly like the Bible proposed. Because if you go back to Genesis 6, um, what's taking place in 6 is the angels have fallen and they've been impregnating women and it's just a hot mess on the earth. Everybody's just living for sexual sin and uh, murder and robbery. And it says in verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with man forever. For he is indeed flesh, yet his days shall be 120 years. So everybody prior to that moment lived upwards of a thousand, or had the potential to live a thousand years. Everybody from then on, it was 120 years, uh, was kind of the max. Now, obviously, some people live maybe 125, but that's, you know, that's pretty much the max, is what you're getting at at 120 years. So... Really, according to the Bible, you would have another group of people. You could not have 900-year-old humans in a skeleton like mine and yours. It just wouldn't be possible. Um, again, your teeth would be destroyed. I mean, for sure, after 100 years. Um, imagine going in an additional eight, 900 years without any teeth and, or just what the, your gums would be like, like your skin, the condition the sun and the rain and the wind would have on your flesh or the gravity would have on your skeletal system um, it, it's just it's daunting to imagine what humans would have had to have looked like during that time um, and that really it made a lot of it makes a lot of sense you know again I don't know what anything was like 4,000 4,500 years ago but that makes a lot of sense to me it definitely makes more sense than saying well you know, 80,000 years ago, Neanderthal evolved into man. And before that, um, you know, there was um, sludge in, a, in water. It grew fins and it grew feet. Um, then it stood up and then it made YouTube videos. Uh, that I really have a hard time believing. And this just makes more sense because the Bible speaks of, I mean, it's not, it's humans, but it's almost like a different race of humans. It would have to be. There's no way you can have this skeleton and make it 900 years with this particular skeleton. Um, you know, 70, 80 year old women just fall and their hips shatter. I mean, you couldn't make it a thousand years with the skeleton, period. You couldn't do it. So if there were 900 year old humans, they would have a different skeleton, period. So, uh, you know, and the other one was the enzymologist, and the enzymologist enzymes, if you don't know, they're kind of the, the catalyst, the things that cause reactions to occur. So, as I get gray hair, there's kind of enzymes causing pigments to shut down, and as uh, you go through puberty, enzymes cause that to take place, or as you grow, or as you break down foods. Almost anything that your body does that's a chemical reaction, an enzyme is going to cause that to occur. And... Um, what this enzymesologist noticed in humans that he studied from hundreds of years ago, their enzymes, that they're less efficient now. That there's this period of speeding up of enzymes that if you actually were having had more efficient enzymes, 
um, then you could. You could live much, much longer if your enzymes were um, more efficient. Um, and then that kind of went along with, well, what would it take to live 900 years? Well, here's physiologically what it would take. And he showed that it can be done. It's just the efficiency of the enzymes. So in our head, we think, well, wait, we live much longer than anybody before us. But the reality is, you know, um, a lot of us be lucky to get 100 years. Some, you know, but before Genesis 6-3, you know, you might have gone 900 years, 1,000 years, maybe more. Um, and then what would you have looked like? You know, again, you'd be have thick, thick muscles. You'd be dragging the ground, hunched over. Um, it'd be rough, the toll that the gravity of the earth, uh, the elements of the earth, and um, it would all take on the body. It, it'd have to look different. It just would have to. So, uh, love to hear your thoughts on all that. Um, hope these videos are helping. Definitely go back and watch the other ones. Um, you know, I'm not trying to say here's exactly how it was or how it went down. My whole point is nobody can say that. Nobody can. You can't say here's what was happening 10,000 years ago, 80,000 years ago, 100,000 years ago. I mean, it's ridiculous when people say here's exactly what was happening 20 million years ago when the reality is we don't know anything beyond 4,000, 4, 4,500 years at best. Um, so anything beyond that is just kind of a lot of speculation. And uh, people call them theories. I dare to call them hypotheses still. Uh, barely in the theory category. But we talk about them as if they are laws. And we just have to be careful of that. You can't break the rules of science. Love to hear your thoughts on it. Put in the comments below. If you like this video, click like and subscribe. If you feel called to support this channel through Patreon, that link is also below. But the most important part of this channel is we take prayer requests, so never hesitate to send that in. Thank you for watching this episode of God, Family, and Guns. And as always, love God, love your family, and love guns.